Micah chapter 5. Now gather thyself in troops. A lot of people. O daughter of troops. Troops amongst troops. He has laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. Tribulation. Suffering Jew. Thou shalt smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. But thou, Bethlehem Ephetah. So there's another, there's another Bethlehem. And we're told which Bethlehem of Ephraim, Ephraim, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, it's in Benjamin, but it's still called Judah. So that's where you get David of Judah being born in Bethlehem. The, the city is in Judah, but it's Benjamin's property. Like when you read Joshua. Jerusalem belongs to Benjamin, but it's in Judah. We're in Daytona Beach, Florida, but we are in Volusia County. So it's not hard. You don't need to change it. Yet, out of thee, Matthew 2, 5 through 12, Luke 2, 4 through 11, John 7, 42, out of thee shall he, he, smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. He shall come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth has been from the, from of old from everlasting the eternal Jesus Christ how can you get anything but that Jesus was eternal even being born in Bethlehem when Jesus was born in that manger it wasn't poof here he is he's been ever since before the birth in Bethlehem he just came down to be a man for our sins. You telling me that, okay, Jesus is half full man, half full God. Yeah, but you tell me the man side of Jesus, you know, began in Bethlehem about 0 AD, whatever it was. But where did the eternal being of God, oh, that's right. What you do is you take away the Godship of Jesus Christ, then you can say, oh, this is when Jesus began. You see what happens when you deform Jesus into a man and not God? So if you do that, you take Micah 5, 2 and just throw it in a garbage can. Even though it's quoted in Matthew. Therefore, therefore, Will, I, will he give them up, Israel? Wait a minute. Hold on. Hosanna. Hosanna. The king cometh upon a mule. He's coming to take away Rome. He's going to give us victory over the Caesars. What do you mean he's, there's that bloody, beaten, abused Messiah? That's him? Crucify him. That ain't the one. But they didn't see, therefore he will give them up. You see that give them up? That's today. They didn't see the church age. They saw, here he is, 
Here's a victory. We're going to get the we're going to get the land. We're going to get the worldwide rulership. But they did not see the suffering Messiah. Had they received Christ before Pilate, things would have changed. Christ would have gone to the cross, but things would have been different for Israel. God sent the Old Testament men, I don't know women, into the streets when Jesus died. 400, 500 plus people seen the resurrected Jesus Christ. Peter preached to them in Acts chapter 2, Israel. Had they gotten right, things have changed. God calls a Jew, a well-educated Jew, a Jew that had a zeal for the law. Killing people in the name of Christian for the law, which told him to do it. He says, I have a mission for you. You're going to go to the Jews and you're going to go to the Gentiles. Paul had a zeal for his people. One day, those Jews just went too far. He said, you know what? I've had it. I am clear in the blood of your hand. From henceforth, I'm going to the Gentiles. And the Bible writes that today, they, the Jews, have become enemies because of the gospel. As a corporate people, not as an individual, there's neither Jew nor Greek, Romans 10. As a corporate right now, God's given them up. And they are an enemy of the gospel. They hate the fact is that you're believing in what's supposed to be their Jewish Messiah. You know where most of your Bible opposition comes from? Jewish people. I don't know how close it is ranking number one, two, and three. Your Jewish people, your Catholics, and your Mohammedans, your, your Allah, your Muslims. Atheists don't give us a hard time. They're just foolish. They're not going to put up a fight. But God's not done with them. we got a period called Jacob's Trouble coming up. Where he, he beats their behind. Because he loves them. But that give them up. That's today. Until the time. You see that? Underline that. Mark it. However, whatever you do. Remember that. You see, most people, you've got, I've taken, I've taken college English, yeah, like, and it's given me an insight. Therefore will he give them up. You see that little mark after, uh, religion wants that to be a period. But that's a period that had a little, <coughs> somebody made a, <coughs> try spelling that word. And when they make a period that, <coughs> I like that, it becomes a comma. We ain't done. It, this is how it's read. Therefore will he give them a pause until the time. Now religions would want you, and th therefore will he give them up. Oh, well, there's more to read. Marked it until the time. He's going to give them up for a certain period of time. The church age. There's the church age. How do you describe your church, the church age in Micah? Until the time. That's the church age. There is a time set that only God knows of the church. And people try to question it. If God wanted to know how long the church age would have been, he would have wrote that right there in verse 3. He would have said, therefore I give them up for 2,038 years. I'm just giving a number. Please don't quote me on that. Sally said 2,038. I'm not saying nothing like that. I'm not saying if God wanted to know, he would put 2,047. Well, now he moved the date to 2,047. No. And when the Holy Spirit told Micah to write that, God knew when the date would be. That she, watch it, watch it, scripture with scripture, study all the Bible. What's the next part tell you? 
that she which travaileth has brought forth. What's that tell you? What does that statement there has always told you from anything about Israel since it became a nation? The woman giving birth in that pain of agony of that moment, what is that period called? called the tribulation period we studied it last chapter four we studied it often so therefore we give them up 33 AD thereabouts plus or minus until a time church age that she shall have tri travaileth tribulation then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel in one verse you've got 33 AD you've got the tribulation and you've got the second advent how's that Oh, look, look at verse 2. You got the birth of Jesus Christ. The Messiah is born. We are, as a Jew, we are in deep doo doo. There's something's wrong here. We ain't got no temple. We ain't got no king. There's a time for a woman to prevail, and God's going to come and get. It. Where do you see the church age in 1, 2, in one, two and 3? You don't. That's why they don't understand it. It's a mountain of prophecy and the church is a valley. You stand upon a mountain, right? And you look straight out. Oh, you see, hey, yeah, there's Jesus on the throne. There's the Messiah on the throne. And you don't look down. But down in the valley between the two mountains is the church age. You don't see that. They don't see that. Why is it down in the valley? Because they rejected and crucified their Messiah and given him up. That's a valley. You know what it takes to get back to the next mountain? Climbing a long, steep hill. How do you get to a long, steep hill? Mountain. Works. And you better believe that's, that's God going to be on top of that mountain. Faith. Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The church is there, but they don't see it. But we see it when we look back. If a Jewish man were to get a hold of the New Testament and prayerfully to, to Jehovah, pray, I'm talking about God, I'm talking about the Jewish God. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the 12 tribes. If he would pray faithfully to Jehovah, pick it up a New Testament, and read along with his Old Testament, then if he's truly seeking, he would see. There are Jewish rabbis, even lost Jewish rabbis will tell you that Jesus Christ is very close. But we know he's a Zach. How many times have you ever heard Micah 5 quoted? Ever. How many churches have you served as you've been in? Of all the times you set foot in a church or any kind of, heard any kind of religious programming on, on television or, or radio or anything like that, when have you ever heard Micah 5? And that there is the first advent, there is the rejection, there is the church age, there is the tribulation, and there is the second advent in three verses. Kind of missed that, didn't you? And he, 5 2, the one that's going to come out of Bethlehem, the one that's Judah, the one that to rule Israel, the one that's everlasting. Who would the Jehovah Witnesses say that is? You can't say it's Jesus if you believe they are, because Jesus is not everlasting to them. He shall stand and feed in the strength of the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. He's going to work and do in God, being God. In the majesty of the name of the Lord, Jehovah. His God. John 20, verse 17. Now, this also can be the Jews, too. The Jews shall, feed, shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, 
That'd be Jesus. In the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, Jesus, Jehovah saves. Acts 4.12, there's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. They, they'll, so they'll be the, the Jews will be the true Jehovah Witnesses of Jesus Christ. They shall abide, live, dwell, stay for now. Now. It's not today. This is prophecy. Yet prophecy, it's going to happen, God said. You see how sure God is of himself? And how sure we are not of God? Shall he be great unto the ends of the earth? And that could be Jesus or the Jews. There's not today. That's neither Jewish or Jesus Christ today. And this man. All right. Shall be the peace. Run the peace back to this man, Jesus Christ. So verse 4 can also be Jesus Christ. Verse 5 limits it to one man. When the Assyrian shall come into our land, Israel, watch out for the Assyrian. Type of Antichrist. And when he shall tread in our palaces, isn't that what the high priest had in Jesus' time? They took Jesus to the palace of the high priest. Why were they living in palaces and the people were living in slums? Then shall we, Israel, raise against him, the Syrian, seven shepherds and eight principal men. Who, what, where, I have no idea. I'm going to move on. I don't know. And they, the shepherds and the men, shall... Waste the land of Assyria with sword. I have no idea. But another war. You know how many wars the Bible prophesies are yet to come? And one idiot in Rome keeps praying for peace. And the land of Nimrod. Genesis 10 a 10 and 11. Iran and Iraq. Babylon. In the entrances thereof, thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian, these shepherds and these men. They're under the Assyrian type of Antichrist. And when he cometh into our land, and when he treadeth within our borders, he comes right into the land. The remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people, as the dew from the Lord. Dew is pure wetness. In the morning, in the morning, get that. As the showers upon the grass, life, I am the water of life, that that tarrieth not for man. It's going to come, it's not, no man's going to hinder it. And waited for the sons of men. Men need water, they need grass, they need crops, they need it. And the remnant of Jacob, from a great amount to the fewest, shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a lion among the flocks of the sheep, king of the beasts, will be Israel. Who if the who if he go through both treadeth down and teareth in pieces and none can deliver Matthew twenty five victorious Jews Israel is going to be so strong one day it's going to be like a lamb walking in front of the lion you're devoured your lamb chops you know what the lambs are here in, in this story the flocks and sheep and all that. It's the people who are the enemies of the Jews. What God's telling us right now is one day Israel will kick butt. Thy hand 
shall not the hand shall be lifted up upon thy adversaries, and all thy enemies shall be cut off. There's the goats. There's the power and the praise given to the Jews. And it shall come to pass in that day, second advent, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee. Solomon had a lot of horses. And I will destroy thy chariot. There will be no more reliance on armies, but God alone. You remember what God did for great victories in, for Israel in the, in the Old Testament? He had an army and God just sent a bunch of bees. He had, a, he had two armies start battling each other to their death. He told Joshua, go march around the city. And they won the victory. You know what God will do when he steps in to be the ruler and, and leader of this people. And I will cut off the cities of thy land. Tell that to the United Nuts. And throw down all thy stronghold. No defense cities. Sorry Trump. There's coming a time when God's going to get rid of defense cities. You won't need them. Why? Because God will protect you. You're going to see, according to the Bible, cities are going to be built with walls. And God's going to destroy them. This planet is headed for at least two more vicious world wars. At least two. And I will cut off witchcrafts. No Harry Potter. No Bewitch. And I can't, that's a, another television program and movies. No escape to Witch Mountain. No magic. God cuts it off. Out of thy hand. The Jews' hand, his people. He cuts it off from their hand. Christians won't be doing it either because we'll have a glorified body. We'll be on the opposite side of the judgment seat of Christ. All that junk will be removed, burnt up. And thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Witchcraft, soothsaying, still is going on in the tribulation period. You ain't going to get rid of it by passing ordinances. Now, if I give it a few times, and maybe America will probably make it legal to get the tax money. Why not? The Antichrist is doing magic. The Antichrist is doing wonders. Wasn't, wasn't Paul healing people and a couple of Jews stepped up and said, we can heal them. And the devil spoke up, Paul, we know, Jesus, no, but who are you? They were doing the same thing the disciples and Jesus were doing. They're doing it now in the tribulation. Thy graven images. Ooh, that's the second commandment. They can get past three commandments without getting in trouble with God. Oh, I'm sorry. I got You don't have the right Bible, do you? The church I grew up would be thy aids to worship. That's the church I grew up in. They were aids to worship. I don't want aids. It kills. I guess they got to come up with another name. They talk about marrying a house. One of the things was we didn't have. But if you had Mary in your, in your yard, you had to clean her. And you got certain days off purgatory. If she's a god, can't she clean her own self? And with her outfit on? Mm -hmm. Thy graven images also will I cut off. Read that to it. Just read that partial, that sentence to a Roman Catholic and let them try to flip their beads. Oh, I didn't say that. Beads are graven images. 
Do you got Lady Madonna or the cross? That's a graven image. Christians have grave, graven images. Oh, I read a cross. Too bad Jesus didn't die in an electric chair. Oh, I wear an electric chair. I know, I just lost some points on that one. And thy standing images. You ever walked in a Catholic church? There's stone people standing all about. Aids of worship. Mary in the half shell on people's front lawn. Standing images. I guess it's okay in Washington, D.C. and Lincoln sitting. North Dakota must be good because only their faces are shown. Out of the mist, the mist, the mist of the, in the middle of them. Thou shalt no more worship the work of thy hands. You will not have made in, made by pride. I'm trying to read this note here. I've got two notes here. This is idolatry or God, and God wins. All right? When did you ever read about, now get this one. When did you ever read about Abraham having an idol or image? What about Isaac? No. Jacob ever had one? Rachel had some that she stole from daddy, papa. Rachel's the one that began to pollute Israel. Check it out. That's the first time that these images and all that show up. And Jacob buried them under a tree. I will pluck up thy groves with Mary in the half shell in the middle. It's a place of worship with green trees. Uh, this Friday, today, I think it is Mother Earth, whatever, green earth, what I don't know, care. Mother, no. Earth Day. Come on. You're going to celebrate Earth Day by standing on her with dirty sneakers. I hope you didn't flush the toilet today because you know that stuff goes into your earth. Out of the midst of thee. Again, in the midst of thee. A lot of mist in between Israel. So will I destroy thy city. Nothing but God. See, God is going to eliminate everything but himself. How's that for a God? It's not a God if God can destroy it. How's that sound? Uh, what was his name? Mike, Micah, what was it? The Old Testament. You stole my God. You taking my God away, Dan. <laughs> Really? You're going to cry because someone stole your God. Where was he? Sleeping? Look at Dagon. He's falling down twice and now he's... And he's still your God? You like a loser God. And I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon the heathen such as they have not heard. Why? Because they're the ones that got Israel all into that. Including Rachel. She was a heathen until she married Jacob. And when they came into the promised land, they adapted to the Canaanites' gods. The heathen led these people in a way they shouldn't have gone. And they are in anger by God because I will curse them that curse thee. These gods of the Canaanites cursed Israel and has been a cursing ever since and will be a cursing to the second advent.
And you're going to stand up and say that's an aid to worship. Some aid. It's destroyed by God and God will turn and bring vengeance upon you for starting it. You know what God will do to anybody who starts a religion? He will get you with vengeance, with anger, and with fury for starting a false religion. That's what he just said. Somebody had to start it. <laughs>